Welcome to the Kendi and Rabo podcast, sponsored by Maeve's Bar Sligo. I look like a little girl. I do have to get a haircut. Yeah, that's nice. I look like David Beckham in Stones and the Fewer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I look like a little girl. That's better now. Look at the big manly head in me. Yeah. Uh, I decided I'm going to start this with mad positive energy. Cool. Yeah, because I was ripping down. I was ripping a minute ago and I said, no, Mark, people don't like that. No, they don't. Well, they do. Ray, how are you? <laughs> no, no, I'm a different man now. I'm actually mad <laughs> to know how you are, though, because sometimes I find, Ray, that you don't open up enough. I'm a really good listener. Okay. Yeah. How are you? I'm fine. Doesn't work like this, does it? What number right, okay, is this? let's go back to me being ripping it. <laughs> like a bull. Sorry for taking last week off. Oh yeah, you went abroad. We well, I mean, you know, you can yeah. you can Yeah, I can, went for a little 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 trip to Spain. Yeah, you yeah, did. I sun my cheeks. You did you got and to eat It was restorative. Yeah, because the last time we went on honeymoon, you see, he got a tan everywhere else, but he wore shorts the whole time. <laughs> Yeah. So actually he had a white arse yeah. So he went out and he wore the opposite to, of a pair of shorts To balance it He wore socks up to his thighs <laughs> And he wore a wetsuit part on top Yeah Like a rash guard And he yeah. tanned up his cheeks And yeah. I, I've seen it lads I've, And it's, it's nice beautiful it's nice Very job. evenly spread Very evenly spread Thank you If very you'll much. pardon the pun Of <laughs> the spread <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, any other old crack or anything that you want to get into or nothing? I think or we no? may start because we are celebrating. Aren't uh, we? we? Aren't are. we though? <laughs> we know? are celebrating the yeah. almost sixth anniversary of the podcast. Yeah. And um, I just want to talk about how this has been put on us. We wouldn't be one for anniversaries. No, we wouldn't be one for remembering anything, really, no, usually. Yeah. Not a drop. It's and great when you have listeners out there who know, like, uh, yeah, probably uh, our days of births and everything. Yeah, actually, the whole this hour, my address, the whole hour. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. So, yeah. The one particular listener has been um, probably our top number one premier fan yep. from the very start. That's facts. Uh, her name's Caroline. That's right. Yeah, she run, runs a little company called Lily Goosewax. We call her Caroline Lily Goosewax. That's what we call her. You'll have heard that before. Yeah. So, <laughs> she is one of the prime people who sends us stuff. T- she sends us a lot of stuff. It yeah. was where I made the mistake of giving out my address, which I shouldn't have done at the very start. Yeah, but in yeah. fairness, Ray, we got a pair of dildos out of it. We did. And you know what I mean? And they Sometimes, still get well used. Oh, well used, man. The, my, the thread is gone. Yeah. <laughs> Worn down there's no one, grippage worn left at all. Nub. Oh, there's no grippage left on this yoke at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't use it. Go on, sorry. So I, um, anyway, yeah. So Caroline got on to us and she said, "Come here, it'll be your sixth anniversary. I'm sending you some things." Okay. I thought to myself, "This isn't going to be massive. It'll be something small." Please God. Yeah. It was two different deliveries. Delivery number one was the thing I'm going to pull out now, and anyone on the Patreon will be able to see it. Da, 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 da. It's a box. A box of and in the box. Uh, there is a very beautifully uh, typed out letter. Oh my God. Yeah, so I'm going to read that now. Yeah, go on, read it. Dear me. Kendi and Rabo, happy anniversary. It will be six years since the first Kendi and Rabo podcast hit Spotify on June 5th, 2018. We didn't even know that date. What date is it now? Uh, 20, it doesn't matter, but is this yeah, the episode? This is the episode. It, it might as well be. Yeah, yeah it is yeah, now anyway. The absolute belt of smelly things they open this box. <laughs> um, and so a celebration is in order. Firstly, I hope you're both well and all the podcast family, Laura, Nicola, Ali and the new little one on the way, Derek uh, and Sean's Riley. Sorry, <laughs> that sounded like you said, and the new little one on the way, Derek. <laughs> no, it's not Derek. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I suppose Brendan too. Uh, yeah, so, so, well, so there's clearly a bit of animosity there with Brendan. I will. I get it too. Like, Do you know, uh, she doesn't seem to <laughs> use this old. Yeah, and ra- obviously scored. we don't have them this evening. We've Laura flicking the yeah, keys. Yeah, Laura's flicking the keys off yeah. herself. So point made, Caroline. <laughs> well done <laughs> to all the team in keeping me entertained. Fair play to you. Honestly, you both have kept me entertained in all situations and places as I go about my daily business at home and on my travels. You could be guaranteed at some stage of every single day that Kendi and Rabo are in my ear, and even as I am again in again for my sixth time listening to the backlog. I don't know if she yeah. calls it a backlog. It's back catalog. You missed the cat there now. Yeah, yeah. But it's not a backlog of episodes. Yeah, Caroline, I'm actually <laughs> ripping at you for saying that now. I wish you didn't listen to this. I still times. I still laugh out loud at the antics crack and general fun commentary of everything Sligo. Your adventures, your troubles, your triumphs, your stories, and all that has happened to you over the last six years of the podcast. Mm. Now to mark the occasion, there will be accoutrements arriving to Rabos for a little party for you both. And a couple of Lily Goose bits for the ladies to hide the smell after the party. Well Lily Goose says <laughs> hide the smell after the party. <laughs> Bear. Lily Goose has just launched candles. Yo! It's a shameless plug. Oh, it's a shameless plug, Caroline. I'm yeah. ripping at you now, lovey. And it is so fitting to celebrate all the great things going on everywhere. So thank you both for keep, so much for keeping this young one laughing every day. And with a tremendous fair play to you too. Uh, kiss, kiss, with love, Caroline Lily Goose. Ah, uh, fair play to you. So yeah. you, if, if you look for Lily Goose, lads, they do uh, genuinely... They do, they do candles now. If you go down <laughs> now and look on my counter, you'll see the wax burning as we speak. It's always burning, Caroline. And now she has candles. Hang on now. It's not like fucking your one. 
that used to marry your man from Coldplay. It's not like his her candles now, is it, what? Caroline? Gwyneth, 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 uh, Gwyneth, Gwyneth Pooltree. <laughs> didn't she make? Didn't Gwyneth Pooltree? She Pooltree. Made candles. Yeah, but she made them out of her business, didn't she? Mm, I can only get another no, one. she did. Do you know what I'm saying, Sherry? When I say she made them out of her business, Caroline, these aren't like your. Is that what they are? They're beautiful. This is sheer Lillian. Oh, she's really nice. Oh. <laughs> I'm it's surprised at that now. Absolutely. How do you go about making candles like? Like what do you what oh. do you put in candles? So Caroline or uh, sorry, candles. <laughs> candles is wax and smells, right? They're the two ingredients. <laughs> Thank you very much. Just so, in case you're so, wondering. So do you know something? When the box oh, it's lovely. lovely. When the box arrived, um I was like, that's a lovely now sentiment. But then there was a second delivery. Yeah. The second delivery caught me off guard. Apparently it was only to be delivered in the evening between 6 and 8 and I was supposed to be at the house. I wasn't at the house. Yeah. So um, then Caroline said, go to Super Value in Ballastadair that it's been left there for me. So I went to Super Value in Ballastadair on my way home from Bellina and I went in and asked the lady behind the counter, is there a delivery for Raybo or Raymond or any of the above? <laughs> and she, they wanted to look, they looked everywhere, no delivery. I was going, where is this? So I text Caroline. And she she be, sent you on a wild lily yeah, goose chase. A, a lily goose chase, yeah. yeah. And then the following day, then she said, it'll now be delivered between three and five. Here's your man's number, right? <laughs> did you, excuse me, did it come by the kilo? So it, Can I just ask you a couple of questions about this delivery? <laughs> no, it didn't come by the bag. Was it measured by the bag or the kilo? <laughs> no, it I want to know. No. Did someone shove a key into it? Yeah. And then give it a little more than the candles, give it a good smell. <laughs> the only thing and then have a brilliant night. It would be a natural progression for her industry, wouldn't it, in fairness? She's I think some... that she should go into cocaine. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry now to have said that. But like but smelly cocaine. Real smelly like cocaine. Like real <laughs> nice smelly cocaine. Oh, that's beautiful. I get a bit of bergamot you know, in there now. And you know that's something that <laughs> Or the bergamot. Say. What? That's something that people say when they're doing cocaine. What do they? If you're doing cocaine, not not. I, Is there flavor I, I cocaine? promise you this. I promise you this. I have never done cocaine in my life. Thank the Lord above. But yeah. apparently, what people do is they'll say to someone, "Here, have a smell of that." Yeah. Oh. That's what it means. Gotcha. Do you know what I mean? I didn't know that. So you could go into it, Lily Goose yeah, You could, could Caroline Love. You and I thought it. this perhaps might have been a cocaine delivery. Yeah. Because it was very shady, and all of a sudden I rang your man. He said, "I'll be in town at three o'clock," and I wasn't there because I was out doing a little wedding ceremony. You were. So I then said, "Well, who the hell is going to be around the town to get it?" So we called in our friend Lucy. Yeah. Right. And Lucy said, "Yeah, I'll I'll take it into my house." So I said, "Right, he'll be getting there around half three or so." And next thing, Lucy texts me, "Is he in a super value van?" And I went, "Maybe." <laughs> it was a groceries delivery from Super Value in Ballasadere. Caroline had rang Super Value and ordered us sixty-one euros worth of groceries. <laughs> Why are you telling everyone how much it was? Because it's ridiculous. <laughs> Who Jesus does that? Christ. Why did Too she? Much. Or, why did she? Did she think it was COVID and we were fucking? I don't why know. Why did she order us groceries? And the groceries? Not that I'm very, I'm very grateful for it, it. Obviously, it's absolutely marvelous because at the moment we currently have a meat feast pizza cooking downstairs. Oh yup, yup, right. Yeah. I have fifteen to twenty cans of Heineken. We have twenty four bags of assorted tato crisps. We had six Cadbury's caramels. They're now down to two. <laughs> just to the last uh, come here. Can you just explain why are they down to two? How would that make any sense? Uh, yeah, it's six down to two. Yeah. We got peckish. This is happening again. <laughs> You're eating your more than your quota. Probably. So six down to two means you owe me a bar of chocolates. I do, but I kept the bottle of book fast that she also bought us. Jesus a little Christ. flag in a bucky, which we're now going to open and we're going to take a swig off. Oh, Lord above. It's not yeah. a six-year party. You. It's not, I'm not a six-year-old unless I'm drinking book fast. So I'm going to open that now. No. So a little swig of this. And what else did you get us? It's basically enough to get us going for the party today. Ray, that's an awful thing to drink, but let me drink it. I go to drink Christ it. above my youth. Do you know what? Yeah, the <laughs> smelly is. youth off that. Yeah. I am. I, is that camera going mental, Laura? I'm after pulling the muscle. Yeah, it is, I'm of after course pulling the muscle in my neck, <laughs> drinking that. <laughs> I got a sec. <sighs> that's magic stuff. Jesus, don't we get a party going? Oh, it's fucking the smell of drinking in the fields <laughs> off that. It's, it's beautiful. Oh, stuff. my God. Book fast. Cry. Uh, Caroline, thank you so much. Can we open a real drink now and drink it? Can yeah, I have sure. one of those? Yeah, you also got us a box you, of Heineken by the way. You better away and get a Heineken out of that there. Let's drink Heineken, Ray. Drink Heineken, eat pizza, uh, smell eat candles. Oh, fuck. I shook that one. Thank you very much, Caroline. Uh, you do sell candles. Let everybody know. Yeah. Fair play to you. You're very kind to us. She said, that is not a hashtag ad, by the way. She's not. We no. do. She does not sponsor us. We just do nice things, and she does nice things for us. That's, That's all fair. that is. But now, um, we we'll get into it. I got a crown. Okay. What do you mean? I, I officially oh, finally. Got, I finally got a crown yeah, for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've never got a crown before. Yeah. I got a root canal there recently. Yeah. How'd you find us? It's interesting. Do you know what to do? Do you know what the process of a crown is? No. 
Basically, well, I mean, they take the cap clean off you. If the tooth is fucked, they literally... They yeah, literally, they cut the cap off it. They just drill it down to a nubbin. Yeah. And then they build a little hat for it, which is in the shape of a, of a tooth. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, a fake tooth. tooth a little yeah. tooth hat. But yeah. they have the machine there to do it. So the machine actually drills out your new tooth. Right. Which is magical stuff. And tell me this. Colour. This was the big problem. If it's at the front, are you not in trouble? I, yeah, so they, they can set the colour of it. I haven't had white teeth since. <laughs> I don't have like white teeth birth. either. Like, you know I what have... I mean? That's my big worry. You know when someone says, well, don't worry, uh, you know, like I've gone to a dentist where they've gone, oh, I have to take that one out, but don't worry, you, eventually you can put an implant in. Yeah. And I'm like, unless you can make it the colour of cigarettes. They can. Then... They can make cigarette coloured teeth. <laughs> they can actually, because they're doing it on like a, te- uh, like a screen, and they build the tooth, and they pick the tint of the tooth. Is this like going into home base? Like, I might but, get a magnolia. I might get a magnolia. But what the problem is, though, they make you decide as you're lying there in a, in a state of undress. How do you know? I was going to be, they said, well, do you want us to make it the colour of your teeth at the moment? But that means if you do that. Oh, you're caught with that. Will Always be that color, or do you want some aspiration in or your would life? Would you like an extra spend an extra four hundred euro and get your yeah. teeth whitened? Yeah, but how? Yeah, I would say give me some turkey white. I shit. I actually said I will get the whitening. I said make it nice and white and give me the whitening. Yeah. Now they left me for just to think about it for ten minutes, and I remembered I was married, and I can't make those decisions on oh, my own financially. Financially, she said get, take out all the teeth. <laughs> Ray Raglor, then look at they're offering me a little whitening thing here. Yeah. I was what she was like. Can they not just take all of the mouse and I'll feed you mash? Yeah. From she, that she pretty much said, look at just make it the color of the rest of your teeth, and let's just forget about it. Yeah. So I got it a little tint above my own teeth. Yeah. To give me space, space to, to a little bit of space for for for, for, um, for improvement for improvement because yeah. apparently it makes you feel, feel and look younger. Having so, what? Having whiter teeth. Yeah. Well, I have always. I think I've said this to you before on this. The one thing I would do is, uh, and I'm not big into cosmetics. I wouldn't be one of those fellas <clears throat> or women who uh, go and fill their face up with plastic to make to look younger and all that kind of crack. Yeah. I would like to grow old gracefully, which reminds me, I was washing my hands after, um, you know, I uh, I used the toilet <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I can't, I can't say I had a shite. There? People hate when you start talking about shite and red. Yeah, we've moved Do you know past what I mean? that now. So anyway, I looked into the mirror and I have a grey hair somewhere here. Ooh. Somewhere. It was the first one I've got like. Mm-hmm. And I have been adamant. That if I go grey, I'm just going to go grey. Like I don't care. Yeah. But now that I got it, I was like, oh no, am I kind of? That's the first one now. Like, are you going to start dying? Now I'm dying it already. Like I'm already <laughs> going. You know what? I have that hair tight. No, I did find one somewhere here on the outside. You won't be able to see it in Patreon, but it's there somewhere. That's why. I do and it did make me think, fucking, you know. That's Sad, kind of, isn't it? Yeah, it's on the way. That's yeah. it on the way. You got it in your beard before, right? Nelson. I got. Yeah, I got a big patch of white in my beard, but then it went away. Which was did it? Yeah. Is white hair? <laughs> tell me the truth now. Mm-hmm. Is grey hair genuinely a like stress? Can you get grey hair from stress? I think so. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. So like, because I know people that grow grey very early. Uh-huh. Obviously, we all know people who lose their hair very early. But grey is a nice colour on people so, too. I think it's lovely. Yeah, silver fox job. I would love to be a little silver fox sheen <laughs> because I'm caught in purgatory now. You're half and half. What I mean by that is, I've still got a good hairline and. I still have, like, my colour of my hair, okay? Mm-hmm. But I'm also in my 30s now and not very attractive to women. Mm-hmm. So, not because I'm in my 30s, because I just didn't Because you're out. married. Yeah, and I did, well, no, no, but that... That but makes Ray, you unattractive yeah, to well, women. Yeah, but no, no, it doesn't. That's not true, Ray. I could be married and people could still go, geez, I wish Kendi wasn't married. I'd love to have a little... You know what I mean? But they don't, but they don't, they don't do that, though. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. I don't just take one of his little bodies or something. Yeah. You know, whatever. You could have done what a good friend of ours, a good friend of the podcast. He what wore a skirt do? on his uh, on his stag night. Well, what's that? Why? What's that do? It just means that it, everything hangs out. Oh well, I'd have to have a very long skirt now. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's true. No, but it'd be a long, long dress. But what I'm getting at is, uh, I can't remember. So no, what I'm getting at is. If I go grey, well, then at least I'm entering another stage. I'm caught in limbo now, like where with, with one I'm just not. Hair. I'm not very attractive. And I'm also, I, but I, I st- everything's still where it should be. It just yes. doesn't look very nice. Yes, yeah. So if I got grey hair now, mm-hmm. I might be a silver fox because because they might be like, geez, look at that young looking. Like he looks young, doesn't young he? looking old lad. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't he look great? He's got grey hair, but like he looks all right. We- and then all of a sudden, not young, young now. I mean, like women in their twenties, late twenties, might be like, look at her. And they yeah. might want to. 
yeah. I know people can't see what I'm doing there, but, but if like, you're on the Patreon, yeah, you, you can see what, what that doing. motion is, yeah. and you all know what that motion yeah. means. Yeah. Every little yeah. tickle is all of the balls. just a little tickle of the, the scratch, <laughs> little scratch tickle, area. Scrat, yeah, scratch little tickle, scratch little tickle. I'm just saying, and obviously I don't want to do that because Nicola's great. It's not that I'm looking for that around him, but I'm just saying, I'd love to, I'd love if there was someone going, up you buy ya. You know, there's nothing better than someone saying, up you buy ya to you. Like, does that make, a, does that make a difference in your life? Uh, the odd well, person I, going up you buy ya, but not me. No, well, I don't know that anymore. Yeah. And that's not, I don't know if it does. Maybe it wouldn't. Maybe I get uncomfortable if they were looking. Yeah. But I will say this, I was chatting to a friend of mine last night, mm -hmm. and perhaps I've said this before as well, but it fucking stands there would be nothing... I'm a married gentleman and so are you, right? Mm -hmm. So we're never going to be, hopefully, getting naked in front of anyone ever again. Okay? Only the one person. Only the one person, Well, Mike. two, including your doctor. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, yeah, sorry, yeah. you're right. So we're never going to get figured by someone. Well, only two people. So, no, uh, that's terrible. <laughs> oh, oh. Your wife and your doctor. Hmm. You know, you never... You know. So, Laura and Joe, in my case. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't think of two better people. Do you know, I'm Woo! really glad that they're as good as each other. They're as good as each other. Disgusted. Yeah. Yeah. So what I was saying was something again that I can't remember now. What was I on about again? You were on about getting fingered by your doctor. No, it was after that. <laughs> Ray. I, that's happened to me. I, I know, we talked I about know that. that. Oh yeah. Laura, what was I saying there again before Ray interrupted me? It was his fault. <laughs> I went like this oh, first yeah, And then I was talking about something else yeah. Oh yeah we're married men now you said Oh we're married men now Yeah oh, Can God. we listen back <laughs> <laughs> I know it was a good point as well uh, Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I was chatting haven't. to a friend of mine last night <laughs> We're married men So no one's going to see our little Todger ever again Bar Or doctor and our wife That's wife. what we got to Shut yeah. up now and let me finish Because otherwise I'll forget it again So but what I mean is, can you imagine if you started a rumour in town that your nickname was, like, Nine Inch? <laughs> can you imagine if if it stuck and you just said, uh, someone said, who's your man? And they said, oh, that's Ray Nine Inch. And then people would go, why do they call him that? Yeah. And then they'd be like, well, I, oh. it, it must be because of... It must be because of it. <laughs> but imagine how brilliant that rumour would be to be spread. Imagine if around town people were going, did but, you hear his nickname is Nine Inch? Yeah, but do you want Nine Inches, though? But Ray, I don't have it to give, Ray. I, know you don't, I, I don't have it to give. But the but fact of the matter is, I don't have to give it anymore. Yeah. But all I mean, what I mean is, I'll be walking down O'Connell Street in Sligo, yeah. and there'll be people going, Nine Inch Candy. See that fella, that's Nine Inch Candy. <laughs> Sorry. Do you know what I'm saying to you? But maybe we can just, well, let's just do you a favour. And let's, let's start that rumour. everybody now call you Nine Inch from now on. Nine Inch so Candy. So from about, to anyone that meets you in the future, any of our listeners to the podcast, all, can everybody please refer to Candy as yeah. Nine Inch. Yeah. Let's change the name of the podcast. Yeah. The Nine Inch and Rainbow podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I just think because... We might be more successful Because with it happened before. So, again, the same friend that I'm on about that I was talking to last night, a fella came into a pub mm -hmm. who was known for having what you might call an unmerciful yoke. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. And so he came into the pub and the conversation started and a woman said at the table, you know he is an unmerciful yoke. Yes. And I said to my friend, isn't that just soul destroying that there's a fella in here being talked about like that? Yeah. Like how how unbelievable is it that that's what... You're either gay a guard or you have an unmerciful yoke and someone will say it about you. That's Do you know true, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. if someone walks into a pub, usually someone will go, you see your man there, he's, he's gay. Or they might yeah. go, you see your man here, he's actually a guard. Yeah. Or oh, they might I'm say, you. see your man over there, he is an unmerciful yoke. It's the, you're talking about the things that, that people, people identify say, Like, what as. would people say if Ray walks into a pub now? What would someone say? See your man over there. Oh, Jesus. Not him again. Like your man at the stag. who we, They were like, you see your man over there, he jive two women at once. Yes, it, you know, yeah. like, what would they say about Ray? They'd yeah. probably say he's a mediocre sound engineer. Mediocre at that best. Yeah. yeah. If I went in, they'd say he talks too much. That 100%. <laughs> see your man but over there, he'd open your What you're missing, though, is there's no specific thing they say about you when you walk in. Mm, I mean, yeah, what I'm, that's what I'm missing, and I yeah. wish it was about... You wish it was about your yoke. I, well, I mean, that'd be a good one, like... Anyway, sorry, that, I don't know where that conversation came from. Is there any other crack that you want to get onto? Or Do you ever story? touch bread in the shop? Give it a squeeze. Mm. Yeah, I never know what that means, though. It's like putting your hand on your toe whenever you're trying on shoes. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, it. that's that's bread. That's I have uh, a moral question for you. Okay, go on. In, yeah. in Duns, they make bread. Yeah. And it's in the in the bread section. And All right, okay. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> and okay. some of the bread doesn't be wrapped. It just be, doesn't oh, be Oh, yeah, there. loose loaf. Loose loaf. Yeah. And I was in the last in. I squeezed 
many loaves. Oh, that's... No, no, you're a pig then. Because I wanted to see whether it was, like, fresh and squidgy and nice Did and you warm. let him do this, Laura? Laura wasn't there. I was unsupervised. Okay. Sorry, no. Don't be to- manhandling bread, you But how jerk. else do you know if the bread is right or not? And then I'm asking myself, is it... Is it Because uh, it's baked that day. Is it societally acceptable to poke bread? If bread is out loose, yeah. it's made that day, Ray. That's the point. So you, so just, you, you, you just, just pick it up and you pick go. Pick one that looks nice. I like that. There, I'm going to have that. <laughs> Right. What you do is when you squeeze bread that's in a packet. Yeah, that's, that's because, fine. Yeah, because you're going. I don't know. This could have been here for three days. Yes. Obviously, you can look on the oak yeah. and figure out if it is or not. Yeah. Like, but but don't be. It's not okay to poke bread. Okay. It's not the only things that are okay to poke inside in a, a grocery store mm-hmm. is marshmallows. No. What <laughs> you on about? No, it's fruit that's been wrapped by nature. No. How how can you know? Because no one eats the orange peel, really. Do, like, no, do people true, eat yeah. orange peel? No, no. So you're unwrapping it when you get home. You can lick those if you want, because someone has to take it off anyway. They're not going to be eating the fucking thing. You yeah. know, like, so you can do that for sure. Yeah. You can't be going around manhandling bread that's out of a okay. thing. Why, if if you, you imagine people were watching you in there. Sorry, the more I think about it, the more I realise it wasn't. Yeah, that's rotten. No. That... Oh, that's true. People for cocktails do use orange peel in yeah, cocktails as well. That's right. So don't be licking everything, lads. <laughs> Jeez, I'm going to have to stop licking oranges. I don't even a, think of that. Do you lick oranges? I lick every orange in the shop whenever I go into it. Why? A, I'd be licking apples, Ray. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be going around licking but stuff. But imagine, imagine just standing there and watching someone go through the uh, that particular area of the shop and licking fruit. But imagine doing stuff like that in life. <laughs> do you know? No, I L- mean licking chairs. <laughs> yeah, but licking tables. No, no, Ray, stop that because you're on about something there now that I'm not going to obviously. I'm not going to talk about no. people who lick chairs. And oh, fuck sorry. Yeah, Do you know what I mean, Ray? I'm not going to get into it. Yeah, what kind of people <laughs> go around licking a chair? Fucking hell, Ray. Sorry, Gee, Christ above. Even, uh, even Laura's giving me a disapproving look. Yeah, right don't be on about people licking tables and chairs. That's what they used to call us in school. Right. Oh, your man's thick as Ant Man. He uh, window licker. No. Oh, your man hasn't a clue, man. He's a window licker. <laughs> Did you never get that in school, no? <laughs> they call me everything else other than a window licker. That's the thing, like, that if you're stupid, like, <laughs> that fella has learned so little because he spends his time licking windows. <laughs> that was the thing. That's real. I'm not making that up. People it, will understand that It's probably one that of the completely. worst countries to go to school in, isn't it? Oh, I mean, unbelievable. I mean, in your school, was there people that just didn't go into class and just wandered around looking yes. in little windows? Yep. Did that happen in your school as yep. well? Yeah, I'd be in the middle of Mr. Whitney's maths class, right? <laughs> yeah, and because there'd be people in there who just couldn't do maths, mm. they would just walk the corridors and mm. look in windows, like, yeah. and like you might catch one of their faces and be like, "Oh, jeez, he's out looking. He's out I there." I don't know how they got away with it. How? But they because they're forgotten people. So I think teachers, principals, and vice principals decide whether some project is worth it or not within the first six months of first year, and after that, then they just they let just people let kind let of people drift. they just let people drift. Yeah, and. Do you know but what I mean? If he wants to smoke fags in the toilet, let him smoke fags in the toilet. Do you, do you know? think perhaps that they were just the sort of people that didn't care and and carried on in life like that? And well, I mean, was it to their benefit or not? Yeah. Because some of those people now are flying. Yeah. There's a fella now who's doing very, very well for himself outside from Cashelry, right? Yeah. From outside Cashelry. He one time at a football match while the woodwork teacher was our head coach, uh, chain smoke fags for the whole second half up front when he was 14. He had fags in his sock. And, and he just chain smoked fags. Smoked, smoked fags. And he was our full forward. We didn't even get mad at him. We were like, you know what? If, if that's what's keeping him what happy. What age was he? About 14, maybe. It was juvenile football in school. Was there not some sort of an adult around going, you shouldn't be smoking at that age? Yeah, the woodwork teacher was our manager. He didn't bat mind either. He didn't mind. Because he was one of these people who they were like, you know what? I don't think he's built for the classroom. Leave him be. Leave him be. Let Leave him take me. over. And he did take over. And I think he's doing fine now. What's he doing now? We're licking windows. <laughs> no, he's <laughs> not. He does up windows now for a yeah. little bit. No, I don't. I have the clue, but I, I think he's doing all right. Like you yeah. know, I don't think he's a prison. Like now, come yeah. here, Ray. I put up an Instagram earlier on. Uh, I didn't see it. Did you not see the Instagram? No. No. What did you put up? I just put up. How are you? Do you want to talk about that? And, no, and then, and then loads oh. of people have replied, and most of them said, "Kendi, uh, your hair is ridiculous." Laura, do you want to throw us out, or, or Mark? Do you have well, these items? I I will try and like compartmentalize them into sections. I right. I know for a fact. I'm not going looking down through. There's loads of them. I'm not going looking at them. The um. Loads of people are asking about local elections. First of all, some I feel so bad because I know who they're on about as well. They said, why does the Fianna Fáil fella in Sligo look like Mr. Bean? 
Which I, one is that? I'm not saying his name because I he's, I really like him. He's a good fella and all. I, I, and then I looked at it and I was like, oh yeah, yeah, that is a little bit like that. So local elections, Ray. Local how elections. in tune are you with local elections? And uh, what do you think they should be? Because I've got some... I, I've got some thoughts on what local elections are i think well for starters given my role uh, as an employee of the government There's i can so i questions. can have no opinion oh you can't talk not really but i can say this is such a shy podcast. but i can say go on jesus some awful agents <gasps> ray There's how some, dare you some who's some awful agents can't say so they here, here, here's the thing about local elections okay mm -hmm. this is what i've noticed not from sligo yeah this covers my arse by saying yeah. this, by the way. Nothing to do with Sligo. Well, I, that's what I'm talking about. Because there's some, there's some fella up the country that said uh, crime is real or something, or crime should be illegal. That's what he said. That was his statement. <laughs> crime should be illegal. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Uh, how yeah, Mark <laughs> Kennedy here. I'm running uh, for a fine gale, and I think that water and rain should be wet. And I just think <laughs> that un until we decide on that now, lads, we can't yeah. go any further as a country. Yeah, exactly. It's that so, sort of stuff. Like. I think football should be played with a ball. I mean, call me old fashioned now, <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know? So that's what I'm on about. So there's, there's, and I've noticed from some of the, there's some parties on the outskirts, peripherals of what you would call mainstream. Yes. Politics in Ireland. Yeah. Now, they are scraping. <sighs> not in Sligo. Not in Sligo. Not in Sligo. You keep saying not in Sligo. Nothing to do with Sligo. I don't even know yeah. who's running in Sligo. I don't yeah. follow it. Yeah. Big into politics all over the rest of Ireland. You're talking about Castle Ray, I couldn't tell. Not, nothing to do with Castle Ray, okay. I don't even know. Where is Castle Ray? I you're, never even you're heard of it You're yourself from this, to do with, yeah. in a good way. Not in Sligo. Not in Sligo. Some of those parties on the outskirts of the mainstream politics are scraping there's some people who have never in their lives, I think they're just going down, walking down O'Connell Street, mm -hmm. not in Sligo, yep. and saying, <laughs> come here, do you want to run? Yeah. Would you run for us? Yeah. For local election? Don't worry about it. It's only local. You'll be in the council once a month. Just, yeah. uh, it'll be fine. Don't worry. And then people go, uh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. You know, not in Sligo. Not in Sligo. So I think there's, but then again, is local politics supposed to be local politics? Are we supposed to vote for the, the old, the old fashioned one? Mm. Are we supposed to vote for the fellow who fixed the roads? Well, you probably should. You yeah, probably should do. Fellas that are in the community that are doing, fellas and ladies yeah. that are in the community doing something good. Yeah, that's what you're voting for. Mental that women are allowed to, but that's it not is, the point. Look, that's not yeah. the point. It's not, sorry, now to get off topic. <laughs> but there are. I do think there's not in Sligo. Not in Sligo. Not in, but there are some people that are are actually doing good stuff for the community. That's and you'd see them out doing stuff. So yeah. Is Not that who you vote for for local politics? Yes, I so think so. If you're trying to vote in a TD, it's do you think get out of your hometown? And what I mean by that is he's doing the greater good for the national service. We'll say for what we where we think Ireland should be going. Yeah, but local politics and the, the local you, elections are coming up. I should vote for the fellow who came to my door and said, "You see that green out there?" Yeah, I was thinking of putting a fucking uh, playground. Now, if I had come up and promised you a play playground, yeah, then you well, would I got promised a roof and a pool one time, <laughs> yeah, you know, you would you would incline to go with the fellow that promised you the playground. Now, that's now, the thing. But yeah. whether or not he'll deliver the playground, it's a different matter. Well, ask me is the roof and the pool. Don't ask me that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I'm only joking. Because, but that's the European elections that are also coming up at the same time. As yeah, well, the European. Like. And I have to say, Jesus Christ, Europe is 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 a dangerous spot now. So it is because the Europeans are essentially deciding things, and then it's like that's what that's the way it is now. Yeah. And it's mad, so it is very relevant. So if you're if you're going for European elections, you want the right people over there representing Ireland. You definitely do because they're literally making decisions that affect you daily. So I would have always said along the way. Um, oh, so your man went off to Europe? Sure, forgot about the yeah. Because I would have always thought, oh, he's gone to Brussels always after forgetting about the local thing. Now he doesn't care about any of that stuff anymore. Yeah. He's gone off now for a handy one in Europe. It's not a handy one. It's not because they're deciding everything. We yeah. we are the most westerly point yeah. of the European Union. I might be wrong in this. I thought the hierarchy of law, right, and rule was Irish law, yeah. European law, no. international law. No. Apparently it's European law. Yeah, Irish law, international, international law. law. Yeah, international law is much shite. No, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. International <laughs> law is, and I've said it here before, it's the equivalent of putting an idea up on a fridge. Yeah. That is what international law yeah. is like. Yeah. That's a great policy. We're going to put it up here and, yeah. and everyone will read this and yeah. give you a clap. But European law now, now is, go is, is very petty flu. Yeah. <laughs> petty you know, flu. go ahead a petty flu now. We have it up on the, on the fridge yeah. and it's a great idea. Yeah. You know, so 
European law is everything now. So we're getting our biggest agendas decided on mm -hmm. from the west of Ireland all the way over in Brussels. Do you think Ming so is we doing need, a good job? No, well, I mean, I don't know. Like, I would consider Ming to be doing a good job in terms of he nailed to a mass that he was pushing for turf cutters and he was yeah. pushing for the agricultural side. Yeah. And it would appear, I don't know fully, like, yeah. that he's got some stuff done yeah. either to halt or, or to, to... Or he's cut some deals where he's gone, lads... There's farmers on the west coast of Ireland that are yeah. people that are trying to cut land or cut bogs. I know his big one was, we won't cut this bog anymore if it's that bad. We'd all accumulate and we'd cut a bog somewhere else mm. and try and regrow whatever the fuck is going on. You know mm. what I mean? That's why you need people over there shouting for people in Common in general. Yeah. You know, or in, in specifically people He's in Common. He's the Roscommon. big fella thing now. Do you know what I mean? It's not, that's what you need when it comes to European politics is, is you, he needs to, even though you won't see him for years, to a certain extent, he needs to be fighting those... Because they don't know what's happening on the west coast of Ireland. No. They will all accumulatively make a decision and we'll go, uh, what? Apparently, the newest thing now with the EU is that if you have any standalone boiler, gas or oil, in your house... Right. You won't get any state funding or EU funding... That's a big jade. ...if it breaks down. Yeah. You did, Obviously, you can't make any comment on no, that. I no, I can't. Of course not, Ray. No, not <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> but that's the kind of shit that... And the other thing is as well, am I right saying this now? And you don't have to give an opinion on it one way or the other, but you can tell me if it's true or not. If I build a brand new house... Yeah. Can I not put a fireplace in it that'll actually no. burn fuel? No. You can't do that anymore either. I think the fireplaces are barred. So what are they trying to achieve by that? Get us all on electric, is it? Everybody on electric, everybody on renewable energies. Okay, so how so do we want, renew electricity? They want you to put a wind farm in your front room. All of us? Yeah. So, so everyone across the board has to harvest wind. Everybody puts a wind farm or a tidal farm. Or solar. Farm or solar. Yeah. Okay, and have we the infrastructure to for that to no, be a thing? Okay, well then why are we getting roads? Why are we getting roads, Ray? I say it every fucking time. Every time I have a conversation with you about something that's getting done, I always say to you, and come here, can we do that now, tomorrow? And you say, well, no, the infrastructure's not there yet. Yeah. I say, okay, why am what? I getting road? Yeah. What? Will you stop going for us? Yes. I said it when it came to the farmers as well. Go after the big mass Taylor Swift dry, flying around 150 million times a year. Don't start in Taylor. Then now. worry That's about the fucking, the, the rest of us who are trying to make a living. A living. Yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to go to Travis Kelsey fucking catch a football in, in Minneapolis. You know? Fuck's sake, like, stop coming after us. We have no money. We have no money, Ray. Yeah. I can I have a fake house there that I can't afford, and now you're telling me I can't even put a fireplace that I can't afford in it no, either, Ray. Yeah. I mean, I might as well bend over, Ray, and let everyone have a go. And Honest that's the, to God. That's the local elections. We'll wrap it up by saying vote Gino. <laughs> yeah, let's wrap it up by yeah. saying vote Gino. Vote Gino. Yeah. He's the man for the job. Gino's the only man that'll come to your door to pair of basketball shorts. I'll, really? I'll just say that now, lads. They'll all come in a fake suit, right? Pretending to be the fucking big man. Gino landed in a pair of basketball shorts. and, and Driving a Fiat. I love, I love watching him going around no. the town. He is the every man's man. And the thing I'll say about Ming as well is he's still driving the old golf that he had years and years and years ago as well. That's a marvellous thing for politicians if they don't drive a Drive shy car. Drive shy car. Drive shy car. I'll vote for you. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing worse than seeing one driving a Range Rover or a brand new BMW yeah. because that's the separation between people and power. Yes. Because then we go, look at your man with the big car. I voted him in, now he has a big car. Yeah. What am I driving? <laughs> shy car. Levin McGann that I just bought. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, wife. you bought a yeah. little car for no, your No, yeah, well, Nicola bought it in fairness to him now. Well, yeah. we split it. We needed a second car. There's about to be a second baby. Beautiful yoke. Uh, and we're going to split the babies. I'm going to take one of them. Nick is going to take one of them. We're going yeah. to move to separate parts of the country. So uh, <laughs> You're setting yourself up for a lovely separation. Well, yeah, because yeah. it's coming, Ray. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. I was chatting to a friend of mine. It was on the funniest fucking thing. I was chatting to a friend of mine. And he was going out with this girl when we were kids. Like, you know, young teenagers. You know, mm. real young teenagers. <clears throat> 16 years has passed. Like, 17 years. She got married last week. And I said to him, oh, did you see she got married? Hmm. And he just said to me, yeah, do you ever think she just get over me like at this stage? Like, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, it's been 16 years. Like, yeah, for God, she want to move on. Like, yeah. you know, for fuck's yeah. sake, she needs to move on now. Anyway, it was brilliant. We got funny friends. They should have a podcast as well. Uh, is there any other crack really? Was there more to topics? Oh, yeah. To I mean, about. I don't know because there's so many questions. Well, I don't want to be sifting one. through. Go Laura's on, Laura. the hand up there now. Oh, Marie Fogarty has asked. I just see it here now. Why has the Irish mammy ruined young fellas for future partners? Is that what it says? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I We talked about this recently. Uh, and I, I can further delve into it if you want. We talked about the fact that Irish fellas, when they go for women, funnily enough, Ray's beautiful wife is here right now. Yeah. 
or Carmel Junior, as Carmel I like Junior. to call her. <laughs> <laughs> Carmel Junior, as she's otherwise known. Yeah. We, whether it be conscious or subconscious, we try and replace our mothers yes. when we get married again okay. because we want to be looked after. There is, uh, if you look at the animal kingdom in particular, not calling the animals or anything, some species are better at being mothers than others. Right. Mothers than others. Definitely Speaking not cuckoos. Why? They ship mothers. Well, they, they, they uh, take over other people's nests. Well, if you watch Clarkson's Farm, yeah. they tell you that pigs are notoriously bad mothers. Okay. 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 <laughs> if you delve into the species of the human being, yeah. I think the best mothers on the planet are Irish mothers. Okay. When they have sons. Because when they the daughters bag shite. Uh daughters, they're kind of like yeah. daughter into a hoover and yeah. you'll be all right. Yeah. That's what they care about. Uh no, but they they we just cling to mammies, like mm-hmm. f- fellas, you know. And then we have this gap in our life where we're sent off out of to fly the nest. Wah! Like yeah. the cuckoo you said, stay the yeah. nest. And uh and then we begin the search then of replacing our mother with the yeah. wife. Yeah. Uh, who obviously has other obligations as well as just replacing your mother. She does other things for she you does. too. <laughs> Where do you go with that? I'm just saying, like, because it's a bit weird. I don't want this. What do they call that? Oedipus complex or something? Yeah, I don't, yeah. you know what I, mean? I don't want it to be yeah. fucking weird. Like, with Irish mothers being the best mothers in the world, we then are always looking to get that high again. Mm. Do you know? We're looking to get that high of Nicola will tell you. Go down and ask Nicola now what happens to me when I go home at Christmas. Like, she, mm. and Nicola be ripping as well because, funnily enough, women out there, yeah, ye get jealous then when our mothers start looking after us again. So am you, I right or wrong, home, Laura? Shut up. Am I right or wrong? When I go home at Christmas or any other time, you see, if I go home for a prolonged period of time, the only time I do it is at Christmas. I might go home for three or four days, okay. And Nicola will say to me, oh, there he goes now, off getting spoiled now. And now what will I do when you come back? Now it. Now. When I do go home for a day or two. Yeah. Laura does get a little bit. Ray. Yeah. So it's not just us. <laughs> it's, it's not bad, just, yeah. it's not just Irish fellas yeah. that look for, but then the women that we choose then to get jealous when we go home to our mammies. Like, yeah. And there are certain mammies out but, there, luckily, uh, and genuinely, because Carmel and Jerndeal are just the sweetest ladies. There is mothers out there, I know them. I have friends whose mothers are like this. They will never, never accept the partner that her son picks. Oh. That is a thing as well. There's always a tension there. Do you, know? you think that Irish mammies have, uh, that was the original question, do you think they've ruined them? For? The, yeah, well, that's the thing. We're always chasing a height. Yeah, but do you think then... They got us hooked <laughs> Do you think current women then so don't provide the same services that the mammies did? Not to the fa- not to their partners, but to their kids they do. Yeah, but to, but to the partners, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Laura, so the, as the, brilliant as Laura is out there flicking the keys of herself, yeah. the finest of women, she won't replace your mother, Ray. She's mm. not here before the moor. No. But but what ha- and Nicola's the same. Nicola won't replace my mammy regardless of how hard she tries. That's my mammy, Nicola. Yeah. That's my mammy. Lay my mammy alone. <laughs> But if we ever do down the line have a son or whatever, Nicola then, that son will say, well, you'll never replace my Nicola. Like, yeah, and true. I'd be looking at him going, what are you on about son? That she, one, sure, she would, you want to see my mother? Yeah. You think your mother's great? You want to see the way my mother was? Nicola's brilliant, by the way. I don't respect her a huge amount usually no, on this, do I? Not, not, no, not. I do. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I do have to make a point and say Nicola's brilliant and all. Yeah. I love my mammy, so I don't mind saying that here now. You know the way when you were a teenager and you were like, oh, good away from me, stop wiping my face. Oh, you're embarrassing me in front of my friends. I love my mammy. Okay. I love her. I love everything she did for me. She ruined my life when I was young, of course, yeah. by telling me I was brilliant, but I still love her for us. But you're yeah. still brilliant. No, no, I'm not brilliant, though. That's what happened. Oh, she told me I was brilliant, it was and I was reverse psychology. No, it wasn't. She believed us, and she was wrong. <laughs> she was thick as shit, though. Great mother, thick as shit. Great. <laughs> I had, she thought I, I had, was class, I wasn't. I had a reverse psychology experience. Go on. Well, I, I grew up and my mother did everything. Mm-hmm. And this, yeah, everything mm-hmm. like. So like, if you finished a sandwich and yeah. there'd be a plate and a cup with, with the tray in it, he'd just leave it where it was. Yeah. And that's, it, that's, I just put it down where she had given it to me. And then I'd come back a day later and it'd be all washed up and everything be put away. Irish mammies, yeah. Irish mammies. And, and uh, everything that's was insane. done. Yeah. Yep. And then when I left the house, aged 18... Um, and I went to England, yep. you know, as many an Irish man did. Yep. I arrived in the house. Yep. Okay. You didn't go working on the sites though, Ray. Like, no, I didn't. Yeah. I worked on, on, on gig sites. Yeah, but you were talking like, I had to emigrate now. Yeah, <laughs> because you know, there was no work. I had to emigrate now. I work on that. I did uh, 40 was, years on the sites. No. <laughs> you know, Ray went and fucking learned how to you turn on a, a, an audio desk. I was 18 months in Manchester and Blackburn. <laughs> that 
that was my yeah. immigration. Yeah. But it was worth it. Yeah. And when I went abroad and myself, and I've said this before, I had the loveliest of housemates, Mick Heil from Czechoslovakia and Terence the Gay Violinist. Um, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> obviously his sexuality. He sounds like a fucking cartoon character. Terence the Gay Violinist. You know, like Casper the Friendly Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Terrence the Gay Violinist <laughs> Oh he's a lovely fella That I mean I would watch the Ali is watching that show right now What are you watching Ali? Oh Terrence the Gay Violinist It's a great, it's a great episode There is actually a nice little musicality to it Fuck In fairness It is uh, Yeah so Terrence the Gay Violinist and Mikhail um, They were my people And I p- Proceeded to live in the house And then I cooked the dinner the first night And when I got up the following morning Everything was still there that's a disgrace. Isn't it? Yeah, no, it's an awful realisation though, isn't it? there's two ways that fellas react to that situation. Yeah. They continue to leave it there and it's Terence's problem. Yeah. Right, which gets you kicked out of the house fairly oh, lively. Yeah. Or you go, well, that's not right. And then all of a sudden you become tidy. Yeah, there is room for growth in, in, I in Irish that fellas. Day. Yeah, there is. Of course there is. We've all grown a little bit. Mm. But welcomed back into the wonderful you know, bosom of the mother's uh, mm. love, you will fall back into it just yeah, as quick. I still leave stuff around when I'm at home. So, and, and Laura comes down with me on visits and I'd have left the cup and the saucer there yeah. and she gives out to me in front of everybody. She yeah, says, no, what but, are you doing? Yeah, but Laura, he's, that up? yeah, but he's back in, he's reverted back to square ray. Yeah. You have to remember that. Yeah. Like I'm all right around the house here. Like mm. I can clean up and all that kind of mm. crack. I'm at home every day. Like, you Stay know, at home, Kendi. but if I go home, I, c- I swear now and I'm not exaggerating. I can't remember the last time I turned on the sink in Castlery. <laughs> Turn on the I sink. can't remember the last time I turned on the kitchen sink in Castlery or turned on the oven or an air fryer. I bet you remember the last time you turned on the television. That's, honestly, mm. that's the truth. Ray, that's a harsh realisation. Have you anything else in that list? Did I treat my mother like shite as well? You did. I don't treat women that well, really. And I, can I pretend to love them? I do love them. I do love women. You do love them, but you probably don't. No, Ray, I haven't a huge amount, uh, Ella. Uh, if there's anything else you want to... Oh, oh. If, if you, and, uh, we got a hundred questions, Ray. I can't go through them all, really. They well, were good ones, though. Thanks, Laura, if there's any who, more that we need to address, you might... Yeah, yeah. Just sift through and see if there's anything you think is, is worth it In the meantime, a uh, uh, local... Um, Kids theatre group Called the Star Factory Yup uh, We're going to be sending Ali to the Star Factory Did yeah, you know that spot. It's, it's basically where this, You send kids And they do singing And dancing And yeah. and, and other things Yeah and then They'll be on Broadway Before Broadway, you know they'll us They'll be all stars or They'll be Sabrina the Carpenters No um, They had their End of term show And I was uh, On hand to do the sound And lighting for it That's right Laura is a teacher In this particular outfit They they usually go for The cheapest option When it comes to yeah. They yeah, did to And I was standing there And three young ladies yeah. Right, came up to me and they said, You're off the podcast. You're Laura's husband, aren't you? And Shit. I said, Yes. Yeah, my, my, my worries exactly. Wow. <laughs> so they said they watch our clips on the way to GA matches. Oh, no. Yeah. So. How old just, is it? Don't say how old. Don't say how old. They're young. Don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, so it's, I, it's my, it is the worry. It is the worry. It is the worry. So yeah. I just like to tell people that if you're not over 18, you should be listening to this. Don't be listening to this. I mean, people ask me the question, What are you going to do when Ali. Is old enough to know what this is. Oh God, is she that can listen doing. back to all this. And I mean, she it really is. gets to know her father at the time. Yeah, it is a bit like, geez, I'm saying some awful stuff now. That you know what I mean. <laughs> that I wouldn't want her to hear. Will you like, go back and re-edit the episodes? Oh yeah, re-edit by <laughs> you mean uh, delete forever, probably yes. Uh, I have another item. Uh, Sean's Riley. Yeah, friend of the podcast was out yeah. and about. Uh, he went to see Josh McClory's new band in Cavan Town Hall. That's right. Last Saturday night. Yeah, and on the Sunday he was making his way home. Uh, in a hungover state because he had stayed in his sister Luigi's house yeah. and um, a car accosted him on the road flashed the lights beeped the horn rolled the window down and the hand came out and he had to stop and the car pulled up and it was a gentleman by the name of Michal Smith Right Holy um, Smith they call him Michael Smith perhaps. Michael Smith yeah. maybe So Michael anyway a Cavan resident says are you Sean's Riley? <laughs> How weird is that? This when is that 10 or 11 happens. o'clock on a Sunday morning. Isn't that so mental? And Sean's Riley was standing there going, he must know me from my work with the Nathan Carter band or the Johnny Gallagher band. Yeah. No. Or just generally being Sean's Riley. Yeah. No, you're, no. Fel- you're Sean's Riley off the podcast. Or I was with his sister or something. Yeah. <laughs> Any of that stuff at all. I was either with his sister or his mother, or I don't know what it is, but he knows me. So he did say then, any chance of a, any chance of a podcast? Well. Uh, a big shout out to Holly, Mike, Michael, Michael me, Holly, Holly. Holly. Yeah. Now, Ray, another shout out as well. I was doing a gig last Saturday in Sidon Maves, mm-hmm. and there was a group of fellas who were driving from Galway to Derry. Right. Because Galway played Derry in Pierce Stadium in Salt Hill on Couldn't Saturday afternoon. Couldn't tell you. In football. Yeah. And Galway won the game of sports. Very good. 
Then the Derry players or the Derry supporters were on their way back to Derry on the long drive and, and they said, let's stop in Sligo. Drink pints. Let's watch the Tyson Furies fight. Yeah. Let's that drink was a bit pints. of a disaster, wasn't it? No, it was brilliant because that's great. Which like. one was Tyson? Tyson was the fella who lost the fight. Was he the big fella? Yeah, the big fella. Did he lose the fight? Yeah, yeah, thank God. Thank the Lord above. What was the other book? Ushk. Uh, uh, his name was uh, Alexander uh, Ushk. Alexander Usik. Ushik. Yeah, yeah. So and he did he actually win? Yeah, he did win. Yeah. Oh, I thought, I thought, yeah, I never No, and by a yeah. mile as well, and thank the Lord yeah. above, because... Yeah, you bet him around the ring. Tyson, and no, no more Tyson is one thing, and, well, his links to organised crime in Ireland is significant, but on top of that, his father is an absolute Bruce of a loony who just goes around headbutting people who have nothing to do with anything. Why would you say any of this in a podcast? Well, John Fury's not going to come to my house, right? I think we'd be all right. Like, you'd be surprised. Well, if he did, it's just uh, if he does. I, I, the only one that has the address <laughs> on the podcast is me. Like, I don't want him coming looking for you at my house. Ray, I have a black belt in karaoke. I'll knock the skull of him if right. he comes in here, John Fury. I wouldn't. Uh, he would kill me. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so they stopped off to watch that fight, and one of them walked by and said, "I saw a name on the sign outside here that said Mark Kennedy," and I said, "I didn't believe it was actually you," and I think his name was Paul. You I think? might be wrong, but to that gentleman who was from Derry, who happened upon me, yeah, uh, and was a huge listener, he, he, I you know my favorite thing that people do is when they recognise you, they bring up your photo, and they say, "Look," and I go, "Yep, <laughs> it's me." Sure, that is me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They bring up a photo of you, go, "Look, that's yeah, you," that's and you, you go, "Tis, yeah, 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 yeah that's it. tis me." So and that's what he did. It's actually what you call him, Paul McCartney. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, that's a different fella. Everyone keeps saying it looked like fucking Paul. You McCartney. do look anyway. Like a big shout out to you if it is Paul. And I can't remember. It was two weeks ago. So. And lastly, Jonathan McGrath and Marshall. Jonathan and Marshall. They had a baby. Tight. Ah, oh, marvelous. All good yeah. and healthy in the way well, it should it looked be. Standard baby. Brilliant. I mean, how great is Ray as uh, <laughs> a standard baby that they had? Standard baby. They yeah. had one of those. Tag. Yeah, they did. Gentleman baby. Uh, fair play. Uh, the gentleman yeah. sort. Yeah. yeah. I know. So. Fair play to you. I mean, what a blessing. Is that their first? I couldn't tell you. Okay, great. What a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> what a blessing it is to you, honest to God. Yeah. I wish you all the best with us. Yeah. And that, I mean that. I genuinely Was there mean anything that. else in the list, Laura? No? That's it? Okay. That's the most crack uh, we've had in a long time since. Jeez, you must, <laughs> must be talking two weeks. And uh, <laughs> thanks very much. Story. You can watch the video on Patreon. Here is your warning and also your apology on Patreon. It was flicking a little bit, Jordan. And I could see us. It's grand. Yeah. It is what it is. We're still trying to figure out why I uh, hate everything about this room. <laughs> so, uh, thanks to Laura room. for flicking the keys off herself. Patreon.com forward slash Kendi Rainbow Podcast. A big shout out to Maeve's Bar in Sligo, where pay you can catch Mark Kennedy every Wednesday and live music seven nights a week. Ray, fair play to me. Fair play to me. Good luck. Good luck. The Kendi and Rainbow Podcast, sponsored by Maeve's Cozy Front Lounge.